Hey guys, it's Blue and welcome to my Cinema 4D tutorial on how to make a Minecraft render. So this is part one out of two. Part one's gonna cover uh, simple posing, extruding, and then rendering out your render. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, the Lightroom that I'm using is by Atmo. And then the rig I'm using is the FMR, FMR 5.0 Winter Edit. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing, once you have your rig opened, you're going to go right down here to Skin. And this is where you can go ahead and change your skin. If your skin is an Alex format, you can go ahead, scroll all the way down here and switch it to the Alex format. But make sure you do that in the beginning and not when you're in the middle of posing and all that stuff because it'll, it'll just get... Um, stuff messed up the next thing that you need to go ahead and do is make sure that hat and second layers just checked if your skin isn't um popping up with the hat or anything like that make sure uh that is on and we can now get into the extruding process so first of all go ahead into layers and uncheck all the padlocks or unlock all the padlocks and then you want to go ahead and go up here to your rig press the plus button and then when it's and right here where it says head press the plus button as well where it says extrude mesh head make these two uh red dots and turn those invisible just like so so the next thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and drag out our head and the mesh hat to go ahead and start extruding so the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is select the mesh head shift click this out and we're just gonna do 100 this way go ahead and select the hat as well which is the box around the whole entire head we're gonna go ahead and shift click that out to a hundred as well it'll be very easy to bring these back in because guess what you'll be just um bringing them back into in a uh, hundred again so we're gonna go ahead and start out and extruding the mesh head right here and the first thing you're going to go ahead and do is go to your live selection tool, select the head, then polygons right down here. And now what you want to do is go ahead and shift click all of the skin. Do not select any of the hair because that's what we're going to be extruding. So go ahead, do this on each side. Don't forget to do this on the bottom of the skin. And uh, yeah. Okay, so once you're done um, selecting all the face, and say that you accidentally missed something, like you accidentally did this, just go ahead and hold control instead, and it will easily just erase all those marks that you made. And the next thing that you have to do is just go ahead and press delete on your keyboard, and if you forgot anything like I did, just go ahead and delete that as well. Make sure you didn't select anything else in that process. And then the next thing you can go ahead and do is then click control A or command A if this is on a Mac. But anyways, after that, we can go ahead and start extruding. So go ahead and press D on your keyboard, set the maximum angle to 91, and then the offset to 4. You kind of want to stick around it, um, everything below 5 or 4, um, whatever really um, goes um, with you, or like, you know, whatever floats your boat, pretty much. I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose 4, and then once you're done with that, you can go ahead and drag in the hat layer back like so. And then the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is uh, go ahead and do the same thing with the hat layer. So we're going to go ahead and select um, uh, live selection again, go to polygons. And we're going to first go ahead and extrude uh, this guy's hoodie. And let's go ahead and shift click all of this stuff. And like I said, if you forgot to, if you accidentally, um, you know, highlight these other pixels up here, control, and then you can easily go ahead and uh, erase that so that's awesome so then click d again and i'm going to extrude that out by four and now we can go ahead and go and extrude the face so the way that i like to go ahead and uh extrude faces or i mean not faces oh my gosh hairs is that i usually uh start out from the bottom and then just gradually extrude at the top so uh for example this layer here i'll go ahead and press d and i'll extrude that maybe by two we'll go ahead and do two then I'll go ahead and do the next layer just like that. And I'll go ahead and do four. And the next layer, skipping this one just like that, I might do six to see if that is a little bit too much or if that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and keep it at six because I think it looks uh, pretty nice like that. And then for these ones, I'm going to go ahead and extrude that out by three. And uh, this is because I usually kind of like to have the most extruded parts right in the middle right here. 
and then it kind of just um decreases off right there so i think that looks pretty good um i might maybe extrude that out by four instead just so it can be a little bit closer i think that looks a lot better all right so once you are done doing that and i do not have to have the second layer on for this since it already has it right there but i also did forget a step after once you are done extruding everything we're just going to go ahead and add a little bit more effect to this to make it look even better so what we're going to go ahead and do is go back into live selection polygon oops let me go ahead and select this real quick live selection polygon here we're going to go ahead and click Control a right click go to your brush tool set the strength to 50 and the radius to 50 as well and now here we're going to go ahead and just make a little bit of adjustments to the hair like maybe make some flow to it you really don't want to overdo it because it can look really really bad like you don't want to do that so we're just going to do tiny li little movements at the front you kind of just kind of want to um, bring it out a bit, you know, just make it kind of look um, natural or like just make it like flow really nicely. Like I said, not too many movements or else it'll look kind of bad. So go ahead, just little minor movements. And then I'm going to go ahead and also shape the hoodie out a bit because uh, that also does look very good as well. So going to go ahead and just shape the hoodie a little bit back here. And then shape the hoodie on the sides as well and then once you are done with that we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the uh mesh head layer so we can go ahead go back into model mode and drag the head back in to 100 and now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing onto the hat the hat is or not the hat the head layer is very easy to do pretty much what you want to do for this is just bring in the sides just a tiny bit you don't want the sides to come in that much but uh maybe make these go out a bit and that's pretty much it that's what i usually like to do with the sides maybe just bring it in just a tiny bit don't want to do that much uh, go back into model mode and then drag that into a hundred and there you go you got your whole entire um, head up part of the extruding done so the next part is posing which can get a little bit like tricky for some people because they don't know what pose to do and all that stuff so you know uh, you can go ahead and look up photos on Google just like cinema 4d renders but I'm gonna go ahead and just go over some simple things this is pretty much the shoulder where if you do press R on your keyboard you can go ahead and uh, you know just get your arm in whatever direction you want uh this right here is the wrist so if you also rotate that you can see the wrist rotates as well and then this is just the bending of the arm and pretty much another rotation uh thing for your arm i don't even know but uh here's the head r to rotate and all that stuff uh shoulders wrist and the bending again here here's the a waist right here um, here's more of the hips and then I guess or this is more the chest this is the waist right here here we have the ankles right here which I love having these in renders and then this is the foot which pretty much just makes it bend and all that stuff. So we are going to go ahead and start posing so I'm gonna go ahead and come up with a very very a simple pose and I will see you guys right when I am back so yeah alrighty guys once you are done posing take as much time as you need to come up with a really nice pose for your character and uh, I'm going to also add a sword in his hand so this requires you to find a item rig pack which is super simple I'll leave a link in the description to a nice item rig pack and uh yeah so anyways go ahead and open up that and you can go ahead and add in whatever you want for your character to be holding in this case and it also does depend on the pose as well in this case we're going to go ahead and add uh, the sword in in his hand right here and the tip is you don't want the sword to uh, be exactly in his hand like that. That is what I used to do and I thought that was correct but really isn't. You kind of want it to be barely out of his hand and so you can at least still see the handle just a bit just like so. And um, 
yeah, so it's like slightly in his hand, but it's slightly not because that actually is him holding the sword. And then we have uh, him and uh, his little pose right here. So a really, really nice thing to do is to actually add the sword um, attached to his right arm here. So to do that, go ahead and open up your rig and go right here where it says right hand attachments. Go ahead and drag that down to the right hand or um, left uh, hand, whichever one. Because as you can see now, if we want to go ahead and move this, it moves with the hand. So it's really nice if you wanted to pick out a different um, placement for his um, arm or hand or whatever, and you don't always have to move the sword. Alrighty guys, so once you're done doing that, now the final thing to do is add is a camera. So let's go ahead and do that. So real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that one because I usually like to just do it um, with my own camera and it's just, I, I usually just do it this way. So to add a camera, go ahead and click this camera icon here and then click this button because that pretty much uh, sets you in the camera's um, position and like perspective. So I usually like to go ahead and do super wide here. And what this does is just kind of zooms everything out and it just makes your render kind of look um, like it's focusing right here. I don't know, no, it just looks really nice to, to renders and stuff. And what the tip is here is kind of angle it more at the head then down here because this just kind of looks weird and I don't really think you're going to be uh, using uh, this kind of perspective down here unless if you are making him look like the other way if there is something over here but that's not uh, the case so kind of have it more focused up um, by the head right here and then you can go ahead and uh, just find which one you like best out of these they're all um, different you can do a custom one as well and uh yeah so once you're done with that you can then go ahead and uh start playing around with the uh face settings so i'm gonna go ahead and get out of the camera angle because i don't uh, want to do that i don't want to mess around with the camera anymore because i already have that set so now what i'm gonna go ahead and do is play around with the facial expressions right here Alrighty guys, I finished uh, editing the face right here. I also changed some of the um, eye coloring and everything. And right down here is where the eyes are. You can choose single, double, blah, 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 blah. And I changed my pupils to the anime pupils because they look the best out of all these. You can choose whatever you guys want. But now it is time to go ahead and render out your image. So go ahead up here to the render settings with the gears here. You're going to go ahead and save it right here so i'm gonna go ahead and save this on my desktop i'm just gonna go ahead and name this uh t tutorial if i can spell tutorial right there and go ahead and save that and make sure alpha channel is checked and make sure 8-bit is also checked out out as well now we can go ahead and go down here where it says ambient and you want to go ahead and copy down these settings right here and where it says um, contrast, you're gonna go ahead and make that 30% just like so. And then you're gonna go ahead and down here to global illumination and you want to go ahead and set these settings just like so. And instead of one, we're going to go ahead and set that to 0.4 and then you are done. So to render everything out, go ahead and just close that out and press the middle one right here which is the rendering one and now it is going to go ahead and start the rendering process and i will see you guys right after this renders out Alrighty, guys that wraps it up for part one of this tutorial if you guys did enjoy it let me know in the comment sections down below if you guys do want a part two let me know if we could hit like a hundred likes or more on this video I will totally make sure that part two gets out. Part two will be covering the Photoshop aspect of this and making the render look even better and adding some effects and all that. So uh, yeah, anyways, make sure to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.